You're listening to MPS Connection with A.J. Hoffman. Perfect. Hello, friends. Welcome to MPS Connections. We have a little bit of a different setup today. It's because we have some extra guests. Uh, if we can go around the table and just kind of introduce ourselves, we'll start this way and make our way around. My name is Christina Wheel. I am a second grade ALPS teacher at Central Park. My name is Kara Stark, and I am the principal at Central Park. Right. I'm AJ. I'm your host. My name is Leanne Real, and I'm the third grade ALPS teacher at Central Park. And I'm Jen Service, elementary curriculum specialist here with MPS. Fantastic. You guys are all here to talk about the ALPS program, which stands for Accelerated... No. <laughs> no. Excel... <laughs> I've already got it wrong? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's not okay. I'll, well, what's it stand for, Carol? <laughs> the ELPS program is Advanced Learning Program for Students. Thank you. Yes. See, that's why we invited you here. All right. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, tell me a who wants to tell me a little bit about the ELPS program? What it, what is it? Sure. It so, um, I will go back a little bit of history. So, uh, the agenda group, the superintendent group here at Midland Public. Um, came to uh, me or uh, and Penny Miller Nelson uh, with the idea and curriculum of really wanting to start some type of an advanced and accelerated program for elementary students. And so uh, did a little diving into uh, the subject matter. We used to have a gifted and talented program uh, here at MPS and still have some contacts uh, within the community that used to teach in that program. And so really building it from the ground up, uh, we just dug into some research around an advanced and accelerated programming, uh, partnered with Kara, um, boots on the ground, um, and are just really excited about the opportunity that we're able to provide to students. I don't know if you would like to add anything to that. Yeah, I think um, just kind of part of how it landed at Central Park um, was that so we had classroom space available in each grade level. Um, our program, we talked about kindergarten um, or starting in first grade, and we really thought that those foundational skills in kindergarten were important to build up. And so the ELPS program is first through fifth grade students. Um, and we, we had the space at Central Park, and so it was an opportunity to have that program within our building. So that's how my involvement happened. Awesome. How did each of the, above the teachers, so Christine, how did you get involved with the, the program? So I taught in Midland Public Schools for 22 years previously, most of that in kindergarten, and I heard about the opportunity that we would have an ELPS program in our um, school, and I was very excited about it. Uh, I was disappointed that it was not coming to kindergarten, <laughs> but I did some real soul searching and um, took a dive to try something new late in my career, and I'm really enjoying what I dove into so excellent yeah. <clears throat> and I actually did my student teaching at Central Park last year this is my first year teaching I really loved the culture and climate of the building and everyone was just so kind and helpful to me so when I was hired in January I expressed interest in um, working at Central Park and then on top of that I also grew up in Midland Public School so I actually went through some of the gifted and talented type programs that they had in elementary school actually with Wendy Winters who is helping us with this program. She was one of my teachers. So when I heard that that was an opportunity that was opening up at Central Park, I expressed interest in that too and I was lucky enough to be chosen. Awesome. <laughs> Can you guys kind of explain the development or the origin of the program? Um, sure. So I would say again really building it from the ground up. We are uh, an IB PYP uh, district so we use that framework. Um, and we have really just built it, kind of we co-created it, I would say, together. Uh, teachers attended um, a gifted and talented conference last summer through the University of Connecticut. Uh, unfortunately, virtually, but we did learn a lot, and then we really um, took that learning and put it into practice with developing what we would like the program to be. Uh, we use all of the board-approved curricular materials um, and I think the teachers could probably speak to just the pacing um, of the curriculum and the different subject areas um, is really just dependent on where the kids are uh, when they get to the program. And, you know, a lot of those extension opportunities are provided for them. Could you guys kind of expound on that, the, the, the pacing of the program a little bit? 
So as far as pacing is concerned, we, um, we do kind of a pretest of what our students already know and then use that to inform our instruction um, within each unit of whether it's math, social studies, reading, writing, um, science. But the other part of it is we also have offered our students a genius hour where they get to choose what they'd like to learn about um, and we support them with materials or people or whatever they might need to um, complete what they want to learn about. And that's a goal they've written on their own um, and are very excited about. Jen was kind of telling me a little bit about the genius element of this this whole thing. Can you, what, what kind of topics do the students choose? Um, so each classroom has students from a, all the classrooms. So each classroom has students one through five in it in different groups. So there are kindergarten, or not kindergarten, first graders grouped with fifth graders and second graders grouped with third graders. Um, I know best the kids that are in my room for Genius Hour, so I have some kids that are learning to speak Chinese. I have some kids that are learning cool. to speak Japanese. I have a group of kids that are learning ballet. I have a group of kids that are studying about Native American houses. I have a group of kids that are creating a song. Um, another group is coding a story, like on one of our Scratch Junior, it's called, yeah. um, one of our programming languages. but. Um, just a variety of stuff, and it's really what they wanted to do um, and how they want to showcase that Very after cool. they got their learning. Is Scratch Junior coding? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. That's, all right. I, I think a neat thing, too, with that opportunity of Genius Hour is just seeing that collaboration with yeah. all the grade levels. Mm -hmm. um, it's been very cool to see that happening within the building in all the ELPS classes. That's awesome. What kinds of goals do our teachers set up for the students in the program? I think for me, a main goal for them is to help them to either develop or maintain or grow their love for learning as they go through the process. And that might be through giving them extra challenges because they enjoy that challenge. Or it might be that some of our learning is more student-led where they will ask a question about something that they're curious about and we'll connect it to what we're doing in the classroom already just so that they feel like they're learning about what's interesting to them and how they can connect it to their own life and that extends it past the curriculum that we would have normally done within our unit that's kind of set up. Awesome. Well, this is the, the first year for it, right? It Jen? is the first year for it, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, how long are students going to be in the program for? How, how, how's that set up? So structured? when we um, identified mm -hmm. students last year, um, we asked families to make the commitment for sure for the entire school year because a, a lot went into um, transportation needs and, and things like that and building classrooms. Um, our hope is that um, once students are identified in the program that they continue through uh, their fifth grade experience. Um, and so that is our hope. Um, we are currently right now um, reviewing uh, testing data within the district uh, to begin the process of identifying current kindergarten students that would then build out next year's first grade class. But yes, again, our hope is that once they start with us and in this program, um, that they will advance year after year until graduating um, elementary school and on to middle school. Awesome. So this is kind of off script, but we'll, we'll, did we look at any other districts to kind of model our program after, since we're sort of, sort of brand new? So really what we did was dive in with, um, as uh, Leanne mentioned, Wendy Winters has really been a partner alongside us in this work and um, retired from the district with over 30 years experience specifically in gifted and talented programming. Um, also, she has a, a master's degree in gifted and talented. She was the one that put us in contact with the Institute at the University of Connecticut. Um, she has worked with them for many years um, in gifted education and um, part of that for us has been the opportunity to network. And so, again, it was a virtual experience. This year, um, we're hoping to be able to travel in person. Um, but I think that networking piece for us to meet other teachers and administrators um, that live in this work all of the time to continue to grow our program. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Are we helping out neighboring districts or anything like that with, with a similar program or anything like that? As of right now, I would say the answer is no, but our okay. hope is that as we continue to grow into this program and it becomes more robust, we would love to be able to partner with neighboring districts or even districts around the state that have programs such as this. Cool. Yeah. Well, I've heard a lot of good things about it so far, so is there anything any of you would like to add? 
I think just when we um, first started creating this, it was a lot came into it of kind of what our challenges may be. Um, and I think one big piece was you're asking families to possibly uproot from a school that they've been at for a long time. And it has been just as the building administrator watching the students um, collaborate with each other and just interact with their peers and making new friends has been really neat to watch um, because obviously there were some nerves in the beginning of the year um, from the students because it's a new new building, new, new place. Um, but they have phenomenal teachers that they're with and it's just been neat to watch that um, and those students grow. Well, and I think to that point, I mean, I know there's a fifth grade student who has started a, a 3D, 3D printing, printing. club yeah. and like all of the fifth grade kids go to that club just because they're so excited. And again, it was initiated by a student, which really yeah. just is yeah. pretty powerful. And, and I think also, you know, this has really been a year of learning for us and we tried not to tackle more than we could handle for year one but we're already right now beginning to plan for next year and what other opportunities could look like for these students to be able to participate in so we're really excited and have good momentum and a really good excited teacher team too so awesome. it feels great sounds yes. like it yeah mm -hmm. great job well that's our show for today we'd like to thank all of our listeners around the district around the country and around the world for tuning in we have launched our Instagram page, so you can follow us by searching at Midland Public Schools. And if you have a story idea, photo op, event, or anything, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening, and uh, we'll, we'll catch you in two weeks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.